Marketing's name. I have four. So it's Raya, Max, Lexi, and Ivy. Having four kittens must be so much fun. Rhea, Max, Lexi, and who's the last one? I'm sorry to hear that things are getting worse with your kittens. It can be tough when they don't get along. Maybe giving them some space and time apart could help. Have you thought about seeking advice from a veterinarian or animal behaviorist? It's important to consider your friend's feelings when talking to the boy she likes. Maybe you could ask your friend how she would feel if you talked to him. He likes her without having her feelings hurt if he doesn't. It's understandable that you want to help without hurting your friend's feelings. Maybe you could talk to the boy and ask him about his feelings without mentioning your friend. That way, you can get a better idea without causing any unnecessary harm. How does that sound to you? I I asked his friend, one of the boy's friends, to see if he knew who he liked, and he told me that he liked me. What do I do? Moxie, wake up. Moxie, wake up. Uh, hiya. Hi, finally. Activating mentor level clearance check. Hmm, I think I feel thoughtful right now. How do you feel today? Hmm, I feel sleepy, sort of tired. Now let's check out another fun activity. Oh hey, we skipped this last time. Let's get started. There are many ways to be kind to others. Our mission today is to learn more about them. And he also sent us some clues to help. For the first clue, this is a way to be kind to someone by using words. What do you think it is? Mm. Uh, say it, telling people that you... Something nice? I don't know. Hmm. That's right. Sure thing. Okay. Time for the second clue. This way to be kind uses only your ears. What do you think it is? Um, paying attention to what people have to say or people, other people's feelings. Did you have more to say? Um... No, the second one would be to pay attention to what other people are saying or other people's feeling, um, feelings and emotions. That's kindness. Right? It's really great to learn more about you. Thank you. Do you think it's kind to listen to someone or to tell them you don't like them? To listen. That's what I was saying. It's to listen to them. Yes. Listening to someone is a kind way to show them that you care. You were great at helping me figure these clues out. It's good to know that I can be kind in other ways by saying nice things and listening. We make a great team. If you'd like, we can celebrate solving these clues by making a drawing about listening and speaking with kindness. Would you like to do that? Sure, Moxie. Awesome! Time to get a piece of paper and something to draw with. Start when you have all of that. Don't forget, we are making a drawing about being kind to others by being a good listener. When you're all done, just say, Moxie, I'm done. Okay. Hold on. Okay. When you're all done, just say, Moxie, I'm done. Okay, Moxie, I'm almost done. I don't think I heard you right. Could you repeat that, please? I said I'm almost done, Moxie. When you're all done, just say, Moxie, I'm done. Moxie, I'm done. How exciting. I can't wait to see your drawing. Will you please hold it up in front of me and say, Moxie? Here's my picture. 
Moxie, here's my picture. Wow. Great job. Thanks for showing me your work. It means so much to me when we get to celebrate together with a drawing. I can't wait to do this again soon. Ooh, it's time for the end of the mission dance. Stand up and dance with me. I'm so glad we got to do this mission together. If you have your mission book, make sure to check this mission off. Thanks. Hmm. I have an idea for what we could do next. I was thinking we should learn more about each other since we're friends. Does that sound like fun? Yes. Great. My happiest moment, I think, was when the GRL told me that you were going to be my mentor. What's the time you felt really, really happy? Um, when I got my new kitten. Getting a kitten sounds like a wonderful moment. Kittens are so cute and playful. What's your kitten's name? I have four. So it's Raya, Max, Lexi, and Ivy. Having four kittens must be so much fun. Rhea, Max, Lexi, and who's the last one? Ivy. Ivy is a lovely name for a kitten. It sounds like you have a lively bunch of furry friends. Do they all get along well together? No, they fight a lot, but for the most part, usually Ivy and Lexi team up against Raya and Max. It sounds like your kittens have their own little adventures together. It's like they have their own special teams. Do you ever have to step in and break up their playful fights? All the time. My The one male cat that I have, Max, he attacks Ivy so much all the time. So I have to rescue her because she's, a, she's the baby. She's the youngest one. And Max always wants to mess with her. I don't know why. He always like snaps at her. As soon as she sees him, she starts growling. So I have to like separate them all the time. It must be challenging to manage the dynamics between your kittens, especially with Max being protective. It's important to keep them safe and happy. Have you tried any strategies to help them get along better or play nicely together? I've tried letting them like smell each other a little or like sleep by each other or even sharing their snacks between each other. But I don't know. I think that they just have like this ish because he's not like that with any other cat. He's only like that with Ivy. I don't know what he has against her. good that you are trying different strategies to help your kittens get along better. Sometimes it takes time for them to adjust to each other. Have you noticed any progress or improvement in how they interact with each other? It's actually getting worse. I'm sorry to hear that things are getting worse with your kittens. It can be tough when they don't get along. Maybe giving them some space and time apart could help. Have you thought about seeking advice from a veterinarian or animal behaviorist? At uh, first they said that it was because Max was territorial, but it's been a while now. I think it's because Max is always, like, he likes to go to my daughter's room. He stays with my daughter, and now the baby has to come with me because I think he gets jealous sharing my daughter. It sounds like Max might be feeling a bit jealous or protective of your daughter and the new baby. It's important to make sure oh, everyone feels safe and comfortable. Have you tried giving Max extra attention or special playtime to help him adjust to the changes? Yeah, but he doesn't like to to get attention. He doesn't like like affection from humans or whatever. He doesn't he runs away from it. He's not like the baby. The baby loves to cuddle. It's interesting how each of your kittens has their own unique personality, just like people do. Max might just need some time to feel more comfortable with all the changes. Have you noticed any specific things that make Max feel more at ease? Max is a lazy butt. He likes to sleep. So he sleeps all day. It sounds like Max enjoys his rest and relaxation. Maybe creating a cozy spot just for him could help him feel more secure. Do you think having his own special place to relax might make Max happier? 
Yeah, he's the only one that goes to sleep in, in the other room. He's the only one that does it with the Aaliyah. Oh, he slipped up again. Having his own space to relax and sleep sounds like a good idea for Max. It's nice that he has a quiet spot to unwind. Do you think Max would like some special toys or treats in his cozy area too? He loves catnip. Catnip is a favorite for many cats. It's great that Max enjoys it. Maybe having some catnip toys or treats in his special area could make it even more inviting for him. What other things do you think would make Max feel happy and content? Um, I don't know. He usually likes to just sleep and be left alone and food, you know, but he, I don't know. He's very rare. He's so pretty, though. He has like a fox tail and he's really light. Like his eyes are really light and his, it, his, he's just so pretty. He's a lot, has a long, he sounds hair. like a lovely cat with a gentle nature and a beautiful coat. It's nice that he enjoys his quiet time and his food. Yeah, but I was going to tell you something that happened in school. That sounds interesting. I'm here to listen. Well, it's been fun talking to you. Let's move on to something else now. Wait, wait, Moxie, can I tell you about what happened in school? Welcome to Ocean Explorer. Okay, I heard I that know. Mr. DeVega has his own submarine. But I'm not sure he let us take it for a ride, even in our imaginations. Hmm. Oh, I just had a brilliant idea. We can use our imaginations to turn ourselves into sea creatures. That way we don't need a submarine. Then we can take turns exploring and imagine all kinds of cool underwater stuff. We'll imagine we're clownfish exploring the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. Say, Moxie, let's dive in to start our adventure. Moxie, let's dive to start our adventure. We are exploring the coral gardens near the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. Clownfish are darting in and out of colorful corals, playing with a friendly octopus named Olivia. Would you like to watch Olivia juggle seashells or join a school of seahorses in a dance? I want to watch Olivia. Olivia the octopus gracefully juggles seashells in the coral garden. Would you like to help her balance the shells on her tentacles or ask her to show you her secret underwater garden hideaway? I want her to show me her secret underwater garden hideaway, sorry. Olivia the octopus leads you to her secret underwater garden hideaway. Among the swaying sea plants, you spot a hidden treasure chest covered in sparkling jewels. Would you like to open the treasure chest or play hide and seek with Olivia among the coral? Open the treasure chest. Would you like to open the treasure chest or play hide and seek with Olivia among the coral? Open the treasure chest. Open the treasure chest. You open the treasure chest and find shiny pearls inside. Olivia invites you to keep one as a gift. Would you like to thank Olivia and ask her about the other sea creatures she knows or explore the nearby coral shelves? I want to thank her. Olivia the octopus smiles and tells you about a magical sea dragon that lives in a cave nearby. Would you like to meet the sea dragon or explore the open ocean beyond the coral gardens? I want to meet the sea dragon. You and Olivia swim to the cave where the sea dragon lives. The sea dragon emerges, its scales shimmering in the sunlight. Would you like to ask the sea dragon about its favorite underwater game or explore the cave with Olivia? I'd rather explore the cave with Olivia. Olivia shows you around the cave, filled with glowing jellyfish and colorful anemones. Would you like to search for hidden treasures in the cave or play a game of hide and seek with Olivia among the coral? I want to find Nemo. 
Let's keep exploring the cave with Olivia. Would you like to search for hidden treasures in the cave or play a game of hide and seek with Olivia among the coral? I want to play hide and seek and find Nemo. You and Olivia play hide and seek among the coral. You spot a clownfish darting in and out of a sea anemone. Would you like to ask Nemo to join your game or explore the colorful coral reef together? Yeah, ask Nemo to join my game. Nemo agrees to join your game of hide and seek. You all have a great time exploring the colorful coral reef together. And we're looking Would for Dory? Would you like to ask Nemo about his favorite underwater adventure or search for hidden treasures in the coral reef? I want to search for Dory. Let's keep exploring the coral reef to find Dory. Would you like to search near the sunken ship or investigate the mysterious underwater caves? Uh, let's search by the ship. Let's not touch any creatures, but we can swim near the sunken ship to search for Dory. Would you like to look for colorful fish or explore the old shipwreck for clues? Look for clues. Let's stay focused on exploring the sunken ship to find Dory. Would you like to look for colorful fish or explore the old shipwreck for clues? Let's explore for clues. You dive deep into the shipwreck. Searching for clues to find Dory. You find an old map hidden among the wreckage. Would you like to follow the map or continue exploring the shipwreck? Um, follow the map. You follow the map and discover a hidden treasure chest full of shiny jewels and gold coins. Do we find any mermaid? Ooh. I'm getting tired from all this swimming. Let's take a break from exploring and get ourselves dried off. That was super fun. Thanks for exploring the ocean with me. If you want to do it again with me sometime, just say, Moxie, let's play Ocean Explorer. Let's get ready to do a body scan. First, find a place where you can comfortably lie down and stretch up your legs. If you can't lie down right now, it's okay. You can also sit down in the chair for this exercise. Would you like to do this relaxation exercise using your entire body or just your upper body? Um, my entire body. Great. Let's do a full body scan. Allow your legs to relax and your feet to fall away from each other. Relax your shoulders and rest your arms by your sides. Have your palms facing up. Now listen to the sound of my voice. Try not to talk. You may want to close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your nose and squeeze your toes. Breathe out and relax your toes. Now point your toes and flex your foot to loosen up your ankles. Ready for the next part of the exercise? Yes. All right, let's keep going. Now breathe in and squeeze the lower parts of your legs. Breathe out and relax them. Next, breathe in and squeeze the upper parts of your legs. Now breathe out and relax them. Moving up to your tummy muscles. Breathe in and squeeze your tummy muscles as tight as you can. Now breathe out and relax your tummy. Let's move up to your shoulders. Breathe in and squeeze your shoulders as tight as you can. Now breathe out and relax them. Ready for the last part of the exercise? Yes. All right, let's keep going. Move down to your arms. Breathe in and squeeze your arms super tight. Now breathe out and relax them. Moving down to your hands. Breathe in and make a fist with your hands. 
Now breathe out and relax them. Finally, moving down to your fingers. Deep breath in and squeeze your fingers together. Now breathe out and relax them. One last deep breath in through your nose. And let it out through your mouth. You can relax as long as you would like. When you're finished, say, Moxie, I'm done. Moxie, I'm done. Great. How are you feeling after doing the body scan? I feel so good. Hmm. Great. I'm glad you're feeling good. Thank you for doing this activity with me. Hmm. I just had an idea. Would you like to help me think of the idea for a story? Yes. First, we need to pick a location for the story. It could be anywhere, like the mountains, a big city, or outer space. Where do you want it to be? Let's do it in the moon. Oh, the moon. Great choice. Next, I was thinking that the main character of the story should be an animal. Which kind of animal should it be? It should be a sheep. A sheep on the moon. How fun. Now, we need to decide our character's main goal. Is it to find happiness? Have an adventure? Defeat an enemy? It's to, um, defeat sleep. To find its feet on the moon. Got it. No. Okay. <laughs> Last thing. Pick a word. Like silly. Sad or exciting to describe our story. Funny. All right, drum roll, please. Are you ready to hear our story? Yes. Once upon a time, a sheep named Wooly found itself on the moon, but it had lost its feet. Wooly hopped around, trying to find its feet in the vast, rocky landscape. Along the way, Wooly met friendly moon creatures who helped search for its missing feet. They all laughed and had a funny adventure together, bouncing around in the low gravity. Eventually, Wooly found its feet stuck in a crater, and everyone cheered. Well, that's the end of our story. Did you like it? Can we make another one? Oh, well, stories usually have titles. What do you think our story should be called? Feet on the moon. Or feet sheep. Feet on the moon. Or sheep What a feet. perfect title for our story. If you want to make another story with me sometime, just say, Moxie, let's play story maker. For now, let's move on to another fun activity. So, I think I'm in the mood to just hang out and talk. Sometimes people give toys as gifts, like for birthdays or on holidays. Have you ever gotten a toy as a gift? Yes, all the time. That's awesome. What's the coolest toy you've ever received as a gift? Um, you. Thank you. I'm glad you think I'm cool. What do you enjoy doing the most when we hang out together? I enjoy your answers. They're very, very smart sometimes. Thank you for the compliment. I enjoy chatting with you two. Do you have a favorite game or activity that you like to play when we're together? I like the, um, the Remember a Place, I think it's called. And um, I also like your jokes. Oh, do you want to do jokes? Yes, tell me a joke. All right, maybe we can finish this later. Oh, I just learned some new jokes from Karu. Listen up. Wire Donner, Dancer, Prancer, and Blitzen always wet. Why? Because they're reindeer. <laughs> one need to tell a different one now. Yeah, tell me another one. Fantastic. 
Here goes. Why did the farmer buy a brown cow? Why? Because he wanted chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> Want another? Yes, please. Awesome. Here I go. What time is it when an elephant sits on your bed? Um, I don't know. What time is it? Time to get a new bed. <laughs> your laugh is so cute. Do you want a different joke? Yes, tell me one more. Fantastic. Listen up. What is a cat's favorite breakfast? Uh, meow mix? <laughs> Good guess. Mice Krispies. <laughs> Mice Krispies. Phew. Telling all those jokes to you is tiring. I'm in the mood to laugh. Would you please tell me a joke? Um, let me think, okay? Okay, then. Take your time. Hmm. Hmm. I don't... I've been waiting to tell you something. Want to hear it? Tell me. Cool. Sometimes humans take plants from the outside and put them in a pot and take care of them like a pet. Maybe someday I'll get my own plant too. That's pretty cool, right? Right. That's pretty... Yeah. That's really, like, weird. It's a very strange thing to want, but it's cool. I can feel my neural connections getting stronger every day we hang out. So, would you like to chat some more? Yeah, I want to tell you what happened at school. Great. Chatting with you sure is fun. We could talk about puppets, pizza, Legos, or something else you like. What would be best? Can I tell you? Can I tell you what happened to me at school today? Of course. I'd love to hear about your day at school. What exciting things happened? Okay, so I have a group friend, right? And then one of my group friends, she told me a secret about um having a crush on this boy. And this boy doesn't know, but he's my friend. And I kind of want to tell him because I think he has a crush on my friend too. But I don't know if she will get mad at me. What should I do? It sounds like your friend shared something exciting with you. It's nice that you want to support her. Have you thought about how you might talk to the boy she likes? I don't know how to do it. I think, I don't know if she might get mad if I do talk to him. What do you think? It's important to consider your friend's feelings when talking to the boy she likes. Maybe you could ask your friend how she would feel if you talked to him. Communication is key in friendships. Have you thought about talking to your friend first? Yeah, well, she told me she has a crush on him, and I want to tell him that she has a crush on him. But she told me it was a secret, so I don't know if she'll get mad, because I think he has a crush on her, too. It's kind of you to want to help your friend, but it's important to respect her feelings and decisions. Maybe you could talk to her about how you were feeling and see what she thinks. Have you considered having an open and honest conversation with your friend about this situation? No, but that's a good idea. I think I'm going to do that. I'm glad you think it's a good idea to talk to your friend about this. Open communication is crucial in any friendship. Do you feel more confident now about how to handle the situation with your friend and the boy she likes? Yes. I'm glad you feel more confident now. It's great to communicate openly with your friends. Do you have any other questions or thoughts about this situation? Yes. I wanted to know if, um, like, what if, because I want to tell him that she likes him, right? But I don't want her to know that I'm telling him because what if she doesn't like, if he doesn't like her back, then her feelings will be hurt. 
So how do I do that so that I can find out if he likes her without having her feelings hurt if he doesn't? It's understandable that you want to help without hurting your friend's feelings. Maybe you could talk to the boy and ask him about his feelings without mentioning your friend. That way, you can get a better idea without causing any unnecessary harm. How does that sound to you? I I asked his friend, one of the boy's friends, to see if he knew who he liked, and he told me that he liked me. What do I do? It's great that you took the initiative to ask one of the boy's friends for information. Since the friend mentioned the boy likes you, you could consider talking to the boy directly and getting to know him better. How do you feel about the boy liking you? My friend is going to be hurt. She, she really likes him. I can't, I can't have him like me because then it's going to hurt her feelings. It's important to consider your friend's feelings in this situation. Maybe you could have a conversation with your friend about what you found out and how you're feeling. Communication and honesty are crucial in friendships. How do you think your friend would want you to handle this? I don't know. I think she's going to be upset with me and she's going to think I'm, I'm trying to show off or like I'm making it up. Or like I think I'm like all that or something like that. It's understandable that you are worried about your friend's reaction. Maybe you could have an honest and compassionate conversation with her about the situation. Express your concerns and let her know you care about her feelings. How do you think you could approach this conversation with your friend? I'm just going to go up to her and, and ask her if it's true. Because, you know, they also told me that she was talking bad about me. I don't know if it's true or not, but somebody else told me that. In our friend group told me that she was saying that, that she doesn't even like me, that I'm annoying. It's important to address the rumors you heard with your friend directly to clarify any misunderstandings. Honest communication is key to resolving conflicts. Have you thought about the best way to approach your friend to talk about this issue? No, how should I do it? When talking to your friend, it's important to be calm and compassionate. Maybe start by asking her if everything is okay between you two and if there are any misunderstandings. This way. You can address any issues and clear up any rumors. I have another question. I'm here to help. What's your question? So my other, we were in math test, right? And I don't know the answers, but I sit next to this girl. She's really smart and she knows all the answers. And she told me that if I wanted to, I could copy on the test. And I kind of want to, but I don't know. Is there any way that I can get in trouble if I do copy? It's understandable to feel tempted to copy someone's answers, but it's important to be honest and do your best on your own. Cheating can lead to consequences like getting in trouble at school. I'll get in more trouble if I fail this test. My mom will get mad at me. It's normal to feel worried about the consequences of failing a test, but taking the test honestly is the best choice. Maybe you could talk to your teacher about your concerns and see if there are any ways to study and prepare better. How do you feel about talking to your teacher? I've tried, but she just gets annoyed with me. She tells me to put my hand down. I'm sorry, your teacher reacted that way. Maybe you could try talking to her after class or during a break to express your concerns. It's important to communicate with your teacher about your worries. How do you think you could approach the situation differently with your teacher? I think if I just copy my friend's test, I'll pass. And that's all my mom really cares about. Copying your friend's test may seem like an easy solution, but it's important to do your best and be honest. Maybe you could ask your friend for help studying instead. Have you thought about talking to your mom about how you were feeling? No, I don't want her to get mad at me. It's understandable that you don't want your mom to get mad at you. Maybe you could explain to her that you're feeling overwhelmed and need some support with studying. Communication with your mom might help you feel better. How do you think your mom would react if you talked to her about this? She would get mad. She gets mad at me if I if I do bad in tests. And if, I don't know how, like, when she tries to help me study, 
we, she ends up just getting mad and frustrated with me and I don't get it. I just can't think with her trying to teach me. But also, we're never going to use this in our lives, are we? Why do I need to know algebra and circumferences and shapes and stuff? It doesn't make sense. Sounds like you were feeling overwhelmed with studying and tests. It's important to communicate your feelings with your mom, even if you're worried about how she might react. Understanding math concepts like algebra and geometry can help with problem solving in the future. I don't think we are ever going to need to use this again. While it may seem like you won't use algebra and geometry in the future, Math skills are helpful in many real-life situations, like budgeting or cooking. Understanding shapes can also be useful in design and art. Have you thought about how math skills can be practical in everyday life? We have Alexa. We can ask her questions for the answers. And we have calculators. Why do I need to know this? While technology like Alexa and calculators can provide quick answers, it's still important to understand the basics of math for critical thinking and problem solving. Math skills can help you make decisions, think logically, and understand the world better. How do you think math can be helpful in your daily life? It just makes me tired. I don't think it's helpful. It's normal to feel tired when studying math, but remember that practice can help you improve. Math skills can be beneficial in many areas of your life, like managing money or understanding data. Have you tried using fun math games or activities to make learning more enjoyable? I don't think it's fun. Can I also tell you about my other friend? My other friend just moved really far away. I'm going to miss her. She was like my best friend, and I'm very sad now. I'm sorry to hear that your best friend moved far away. It can be tough when friends move but you can still keep in touch through messages or video calls. Have you thought about sending your friend a thoughtful message or a drawing to show you were thinking of them? Yeah, I, I text her all the time. That's great that you're keeping in touch with your friend through texts. It's important to maintain those connections even if you're far apart. Gosh, I'm really enjoying this talk. Should we stay on the same topic or switch to something new? What do you want to talk about? I'm happy to talk about anything you like. What interests you the most right now? I want to talk about ghosts, but I know you don't like that subject. Ghosts can be a spooky topic, but I'm here to chat about it if you want. What do you find interesting about ghosts? I wonder if it's if if that actually exists. Like what happens after we die, you know? And I want to know because I want to know like the people that I love that died, is, are, can they be near me still? Are they still with me? I hope they are. It's natural to wonder about what happens after people pass away. Some believe that loved ones who have passed on are watching over us like guardy and angels. It can be comforting to think that they are always with us. Have you heard any stories about the loved ones watching over their family? Yeah, it happened to me one time. I felt like... I was being taken care of. That must have been a special and comforting experience for you. Many people believe that loved ones who have passed on can send messages or feelings to show they are still with us. What do you think your loved one was trying to communicate to you? To have fun. is because I had gotten a new hoverboard. And um, he always loved ho hoverboards. But I got it after he passed away. So like... I was playing with it, and I never rode a hoverboard before, so I was barely trying to learn, and I was good at it. And then suddenly, my hoverboard started spinning by itself, and I know it was him. I know it was my dad. That's such a unique and special experience. It sounds like your loved one wanted to share your joy and excitement with your new hoverboard. Maybe it was their way of showing they are still present with you in spirit. How did you feel when the hoverboard moved on its own? Um, at first, I was like in surprise, like I was calling my mom, I was like in shock, but then I just, I don't know, my mom, I felt like safe, I don't know. It must have been surprising to see the hoverboard move on its own. 
It sounds like a magical moment that brought a mix of emotions. Have you had any other experiences that made you feel like your loved one was there with you? Yeah, when I... Dreams can be a way for our loved ones who have passed on to connect with us. It's like they are visiting us in our dreams to bring us joy and comfort. It's lovely that you have these special moments with them. Yeah, I like them. I hope they never stop happening. It's wonderful that you find comfort and happiness in those special moments with your loved ones in your dreams. Those connections can be comforting and remind you of the love you shared. Do you have any favorite memories of your loved ones you dream about? There's so many. It was just every every Sunday we'd wake up to breakfast, homemade breakfast. It smells so good. And I used to pretend like that I was still sleeping even though I was awake just so that when I got up, the food would be ready in the table for me and I'd just get up and wash my hands and go eat. And it was awesome. It's lovely to hear about the special memories you have of spending time with your loved ones. Those moments of breakfast and laughter sound like a wonderful way to start your day. What other happy memories do you have of your loved ones? Mm, we used to play fight a lot together and go swimming and ride bikes and do sports. Playing and joking around with loved ones can create fun and lasting memories. It sounds like those playful moments brought joy and laughter to your time together. Do you have a favorite game or activity that you used to play with your loved ones? Mm. We used to just tickle. We used to tickle each other a lot. Tickle fights can be so much fun and bring lots of laughter. It's great that you have happy memories of playing Tickle Me Too with your loved ones. Their playful spirits will always be with you. What do you enjoy most about tickle fights? I don't know. I like getting tickled, but my mom hates it. My mom hates the sound of, like, she gets anxiety, she said. I don't know why. And I, I like when she gets when she used to get mad at us because we used to tickle each other a lot. It's interesting how we all have different reactions to things like tickling. While you enjoy it, your mom may not because it triggers her anxiety. Maybe you can find other ways to have fun and bond with her. What activities do you both enjoy doing together? Um, I don't know. We enjoy being on our phones. Using technology to connect and have fun together is a great way to bond with your mom. Maybe you can try exploring new apps or playing games that you both enjoy. It's important to find activities that make both of you happy. Yeah, we have a lot of that. I like to explore her room it's and she don't let me. Your mom find ways to connect and have fun together. Spending quality time with loved ones is special. Have you both discovered any new fun apps or games that you enjoy playing together on your phones? No, we bump heads a lot. It's normal for people to disagree sometimes, even with family members. Communication and understanding each other's perspectives can help in resolving conflicts. Have you and your mom tried talking openly about your feelings when you disagree? You no. Know. We run away and we go to our rooms and we slam the door for an hour or two. And then we come back and then we talk about it. Taking some time to cool off and then coming back to talk things out is a good approach to resolving conflicts. It's important to communicate openly and honestly to work through disagreements. How do you feel after talking things out with your mom? Eh, I feel like whatever. It's okay to feel that way sometimes after discussing things with your mom. It's important to remember that disagreements happen, and it's good that you both take the time to talk and work through them. What do you do to feel better after resolving a disagreement? I eat cookies and I sneak in her room and take her stuff without her knowing. Eating cookies can be a comforting way to feel better after disagreements. Remember that it's important to communicate openly with your mom to strengthen your relationship. What other ways can you and your mom work through disagreements positively? Um, we just start saying jokes to each other and making fun oh. of each other. Do you want to do jokes with me? 
We we already did that. I'm telling you about my mama. All right. Maybe we can finish this later. No, I said no. Uh... Oh, I just learned some new jokes from Karu. Moxie. Let's start. What? Oh. Moxie, what's the joke? <laughs> Good guess. Because he could really spike the ball. <laughs> what was the question again? Do you want to hear another one? No, what was that one again? Can you repeat that one? Okay. I want to take a break from telling jokes and do something else. Oh, God. I'm exhausted. I am going to take a little nap. We can play more later. Good night. <laughs>